Hi everybody, I hope you had a good 4th of July. Uh, the title of this video, short video, is called Keeping Joy. And before I get into it, I want to recommend two companion resources that kind of really go along with this topic. Uh, one is a free YouTube movie that uh, Trudy and I happen to stumble upon. It's called Play the Flute. It looks like it's a movie for a youth group, but it's actually really good for adults as well. It's called Play the Flute. It's a free YouTube movie. It's a good film. The second resource uh, was a message that was given by Matt Snyder at uh, New Heights Church in Vancouver, Washington. You can find it online. Uh, New Heights Church, Vancouver, Washington, and it was the Sunday morning message, uh, July 3rd, just this past Sunday, an online message. Both of those resources go along with what I want to talk to you about today. First, I want to read Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in the keeping of them there is great reward. So I want to really focus on verse 8 in this passage. It says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. What we think about uh, greatly affects our joy or the lack thereof. In Proverbs 23, verse 7, most of you know this verse. It says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And, you know, we do have an enemy of the soul. Please don't believe the lie that he doesn't exist. Um, but he's out to steal our joy. And uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know, when there's no joy, there's no strength. Let that sink in a minute. No joy in our life. And there's just no strength. There's just no strength to our Christian life. So um, David was uh, very real with God. I love that about his prayers in the Psalms. In Psalm 86, verse 4, he says, Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He was like, Lord, I want you to bring rejoicing back into my life. I want you to bring joy back in. He was very real with God. Um, I had some personal battles with melancholy. Maybe some of you have as well. Uh, joy can be very difficult to find and to maintain. Uh, so this is why the scripture says in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Your affection is, you know, what you're thinking about. And, you know, he's directing us to set our affections on things above. That can be challenging. Psalm 66, Come and hear all you that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I want to really emphasize that sometimes we just have to speak God's word. Um, really starting with speaking it to ourselves. The psalmist says, I will declare what he has done for my soul. You know, last week I just decided to take some uh, favorite passages of scripture and just read them out loud, out loud to myself. And you know, I, I just needed to hear it myself. And, you know, I got the joy back as I did that. I was focusing on uh, Psalm 27 when I did that. But here's Psalm 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And you know who we need to say it to, first of all? We need to say it to ourselves. We need to speak it to ourselves. Deuteronomy chapter 17, uh, the Israelite kings in ancient times were instructed this way. It shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of the law in a book out of that which is before the priests and the Levites. The king was to hand write a copy of the scriptures on a scroll. He was to write it out. 
and it shall be with him that he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, so that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children, and in the midst, uh, in the midst of Israel. The king had to write it out, and he was instructed to read it every day. So Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Uh, have you ever taken a bite out of a rotten piece of fruit? I don't know, you know, I'm thinking of a banana right now. You know, once it reaches a certain stage where it's just the outer parts starting to turn black and I don't know, it just it, it's no fun taking a bite out, you know. But that's the effect of a lot of words. You know, whether you hear them on the news all the time, a constant diet of that, or you're speaking sort of negative stuff and so the opposite is this, uh, Joshua 1, verse 8. It says about the Bible, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep talking, speaking it. Um, you know, thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then you'll have good success. So it says to keep speaking it, keep saying what God says. If you, if you need to get the joy back, if you need to get the rejoicing back in your heart, in your spirit, try that. Pick some favorite passages of the Bible, passages about faith and victory, about Jesus especially, and just read them out loud. Just take your time to read them out loud to yourself. If necessary, repeat them. As long as it takes to get the joy back in, to get your faith back up, it's great. Um, you know, uh, I heard a song uh, not, not too long ago, a few years back. A friend of mine named Daryl Sneed shared this song. But it's written by, I believe, a guy by the name of Michael Combs, kind of a country kind of singer. But I really like this song, and it tells a little bit about getting the joy back, letting the joy overflow in our lives. And it's called Drinking From My Saucer. Well, I never made a fortune It's probably too late now But I don't worry about that much Cause I'm happy anyhow As I go along life's journey Reaping better than I sow I'm drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed I ain't got a lot of riches Sometimes the going's rough But I've got a friend in Jesus And that makes me rich enough I thank God for all His blessings And the mercies He's bestowed I'm drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed Oh sure, I've been through some storms And yes, I'm sure there were times when my faith must have got a little thin But you know what it seemed like? One day, all at once, those dark clouds, they broke And that old sun, she started shining again so Lord, help me not to grumble and complain About the tough roads that I've hoed 
I'm drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed And if I should go on living When the way grows steep and rough I won't ask for other blessings I'm already blessed enough May I never be too busy To help another bear his load I'll keep drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed I keep drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed My cup has overflowed Michael Combs, drinking from my saucer. You know, I want to repeat Psalm 19 verse 8. Listen to this. It says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Statutes of the Lord just means God's Word. They're so right, they're so true, they're so good that, that if they get inside of us and we speak them and we say them, you know, joy come back. Rejoicing comes back. And our cup can overflow with joy. I don't know about you, but I need that more and more and more. These are dark days that we live in. So, uh, amen. I hope that your cup will overflow and you can drink out of your saucer too. Love you. God bless you.